Father, we want to thank you that you hear us, God. God, that your grace is sufficient. That your presence is made known to us every day, oh God, as we seek your face. And Lord God, as we come tonight before your throne, we thank you for this day that you have created. From the rising of the sun to the going down to the same, your name is worthy to be praised. We thank you, Lord God, that you're working in our lives to will and to do according to your good pleasure. We thank you for the healing balm of Gilead, O oh God, the anointing salve that's been poured out from the cross, O oh God, to heal and deliver and set us free, O oh God, that we're able to receive, O oh God, what we're looking for from you, God, from the promises of your word. We ask tonight, God, that you bind the broken hearts, that you mend the wounded, Father God, that you strengthen those who are weak, that you stir up our faith, O oh God, to be increased, to trust you. We thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh. You continue to keep on providing. You are the rock upon which we stand. And Lord God, in areas of our lives, we have been broken, bru bruised, and wounded, and torn down. God, we want to thank you for the healing power of God to flow from your anointing to heal every heart, oh God. As we look to the hills which comes our help, our help comes from you, Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. We know, God, that this is the confidence we have in you. Whatever we ask in your name, you hear us, God. You answer us according to your word. We know that you're faithful, God. You redeemed our lives from the curse of the law of sin and death. And we want to thank you, Lord God, that we're able to call upon you in faith and know that you would hear us, God. And we know, Father God, that you promised in your word to never leave us nor forsake us. And tonight, God, we come believing, oh God, that the, that the hearts of those, Father God, who are going through the struggles and the trials of life, oh God, your help is being there to strengthen them right now, God. You are their help, oh God. You are, Father God, their source and the strength of their life. You are the glory and the lifter of their heads. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we bind demonic forces and every attack of the enemy, oh God, that comes against the people of God from hearing this word to now, God. We pray that the word of God will penetrate the hearts of every hearer and every listener, every believer, God. That it will, Father God, empower them. To stand strong in the promises of your word, God. Because we know that this is the confidence, God. That we can trust in you, Father God, with all of our hearts and lean not to our own understanding. But in all our ways, we can acknowledge you. And we know that you will direct our path. And we ask the Father tonight that you be glorified. That you, Father God, be lifted up, O oh God, as we come to the throne of grace, knowing, Father God, that you are omnipotent, you're omniscient, you're omnipresent, God. You're here, Father, and everywhere around the same world at the same time, God. You're all powerful, you're all knowing, God. And there's nothing that you don't know about us, God. It doesn't matter what we're going through in this life, God. You're there, God. Reminded us, O oh God. If you brought the children of Israel over the, uh, the Red Sea, Father God, and Pharaoh was behind them, and you drowned the enemies in the waters, God, you can still do the same thing today, God, deliver us. You are our deliverer. You are high priest, oh God, who forever lives in the body to make intercession for us. And God, we thank you that you're working in our lives, oh God, to perfect the thing that concerns us. We ask, Father, tonight that your word, Father God, will come forth with power and authority. That your word will reach the hearts of the listeners, God. That the word of Christ will dwell in their hearts, oh God, richly in psalms and spiritual psalms. They'll call them to sing sweet melodies in their hearts to you, God. To rejoice in the Lord and be exceedingly glad. As we recognize, oh God, the spirit of infirmity. That some things are caused by our own confession, God. But tonight we come in faith, oh God. Believing that our conversations are going to change, oh God. The things we hear is going to change, oh God. The things we allow in our ear gates, our eyes, oh God, to see. It's going to change tonight, oh God. As we hear the word of God, that you penetrate the darkness of our hearts, oh God. To draw us to the fountain of living waters. That we can drink freely from your fountain and be filled. And we thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. I do apologize for that not having my uh, microphone on earlier. I didn't realize it was on mute. 
but thank you for sending that message. I appreciate it. But as we have been discussing the spirit of infirmity, tonight I want to read a devotional uh, from the book More of You God, More of You God, and it's from yesterday's devotion, that's December 7th. And it says, Lord, today as I embrace my thoughts in this Christmas season, I think of Joseph, a true man of God, who was getting ready to marry Mary. He was faith with her carrying a child conceived by the Holy Spirit. How would I feel if this was happening to me? How would I react when the angel appeared in a dream? Would I believe or would I have doubt? Father, as I look over my life and all of the challenges it brings, I realize I must truly rely on your wisdom grace and mercy just like Joseph. Joseph believed and when he was awakened from his dream he did just as the angel of the Lord directed him to do. He took Mary as his wife and he kept her as a virgin until she gave birth to a son. They call this son Jesus. Hallelujah. I ask you Lord to allow me to keep on trusting you in all circumstances, just like Joseph. Give me discernment, Lord, to know what is of you and what isn't. I'm waiting on you, Lord Jesus. I have your subtle assurance of peace. It passes all understanding as I move forward. My life and all my decisions must depend on more of you, God. Hallelujah. I love that devotional. It's very beautiful. It's a challenge of faith. When we're faced with oppositions and circumstances in our lives, we must recognize that we got to have faith in whatever God has spoken to you to do. If you don't have faith, doubt will settle in your heart. And the doubt will deprive you from the promises God has for you. But we must walk by faith and not by sight. As we have started a discussion last week on the spirit of infirmity, in Luke chapter 13, Luke chapter 13, let me go there real right quick, verse 11 through 13. Luke chapter 13, 11 through 13 it says behold there was a woman which had the spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together hallelujah glory to god glory to god glory to god she was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself and when jesus saw her he called her to him and said unto her woman thou art loose from thine infirmity and he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God that is so awesome how we have the same access to the promises of God that we can call upon the name of Jesus in the midst of our infirmities today and God will deliver us some things come through our conversation or our confession. Whatever it is you confess over yourself, negative or positively, you will receive the result of your confession. Uh, there are many different subjects that's dealing with the spirit of infirmity. We talked about the bent body, the spine. We talked about the impotent, the frail and the lame. Also another subject, it deals with asthma, hay fever, allergies, arthritis, lingering disorders, weaknesses, oppression, and cancer. And many people are victimized by the enemy because of a lack of faith. Many times the enemy, when he brings a thought to you that's not of God, it can come through the doctor reports. It can come through peers. It can come through your family. It can come through your friend. 
whatever word you receive from other people could either make or break you depending on your faith because we can have faith as well in the negative things and the positive things if our faith is anchored in the negative things we get negative results many times we try to get a different result by doing the same method but if you change the method of what you're believing and trusting in if it's negative and start having a positive outlook and a positive mindset and a positive conversation your results will be positive we talked about how Jesus was able to heal this woman of her infirmity and there are many incidents in the Bible where Jesus healed the blind man he healed the crippled he raised the dead to life Jesus has such an anointing such power within himself Luke mentions it in Acts chapter 10 verse 38 he says that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him you see it, it is God's will to heal all who are oppressed of the devil. It is God's will that you receive healing. Healing is the children's bread. And a lot of times, many people are struck or stricken with infirmities or sicknesses, and they hold on to those things because of their confession. I remember a time when I was sick with a respiratory infection. <laughs> And the more I kept getting in agreement with that sickness and kept confessing I'm sick, I don't seem to be getting well. It's like everything I do is just getting worse, getting worse, getting worse. Guess what happened? I got worse. Until the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, change your confession. And when I changed my confession to what God says that by his stripes we were healed. And I start believing that a merry heart does good like medicine, a broken spirit drives the bones. When I start confessing God's word concerning healing, and the more I confess God's word, the results came into fruition. Healing began to manifest. My body started getting better. The respiratory system started repairing itself. I took an antibiotic, which helped enable the healing. But most of the results came from the power of the word of God because I believe that God's word was the source of my healing. A lot of times if we don't believe God's word for ourselves, we cause ourselves to be victimized by the enemy and start getting into agreement with the negative things he has spoken against you because he came to kill, still and destroy what God has promised for you. Healing is a promise. Deliverance is a promise. Regulated mindset is a promise. Why? Because it said we ought to have the mind of Christ. And God, Christ's mind is not confused. In Christ's mind is no negative confessions. In Christ's mind, there is the word of God. And as we get into the word of God, and you get the word inside of you, and begin to speak as God commanded Joshua in chapter 1 and 8, he commanded him, Joshua 1 and 8, to speak the word over himself and to meditate it. If we meditate on what God has spoken to us, it is a guarantee that your body will be healed. You've got to believe God's word for yourself. If you can't believe God's word, you cannot expect the word to work for you. If you don't believe God's word and, and get the word inside of you, you're not going to be healed. You're not going to receive the word of God. But God promises healing. It's for us. And all we got to do is walk in it. Believe it. Trust in God. Stand on the word. And with confidence. Proverbs 14 verse 30 says, A heart at peace gives life to the body. A heart at peace gives life to the body. So when you have peace in your heart to believe what God says, His word would not return to Him null and void. But God promises that I will keep you in perfect peace when your mind is stayed on him. So when you set your mind on the Lord, your heart has to be in agreement with what your mind is thinking. That's the reason why so many people 
find themselves afflicted with different illnesses is because you think the thought of illnesses, you confess the, the word out of your mouth about illnesses, and then your heart gets into agreement with the illnesses, and the illnesses take control of your body, and the end results, you're broken down. You're afflicted. You're miserable. You get feverish. Why? Because I confessed it over and over in my mind to where now it's taking control of me. You have to line your confession up with God's word to believe what God says about you is a promise and that it will work. God's word will work if you allow it to work in you. Another scripture, Exodus 15, chapter, verse 26. The Lord says, I am the Lord who heals you. The Lord promises to heal us. He promises to deliver us. He promises to bring us out of our situations. Doesn't matter how bad it looks. Doesn't matter what the devil has spoken against you. Doesn't matter how bad it hurts. God promises that you are healed by the words of Jesus Christ. We've got to get into agreement with God's word. we got to speak the word over ourselves. We must be consistent. You can't believe today that you're healed and then tomorrow believe you're sick. You can't be double-minded. You have to be consistent in your belief system. To overcome that problem, the belief has to be been taught. <coughs> Excuse me. The belief has been taught that God, there are many times people have been taught that God uses sickness to teach his children a lesson. But that's a lie from the devil. I remember growing up hearing that in church just before that when your children are out of order, that God was what allows you to get sick because you're bad. God will punish you because you're bad. God will allow stuff to happen to you when you keep on being rebellious and you keep being stubborn. But it's not God's will to make you sick. It's not God's will to hurt you. It's God's will to give you life and peace. God, God said the thief come down only but the kill still and destroy. But I have come that you have life and have it more abundantly. You cannot have life more abundantly if your mindset is not being transformed. We must have a transformative mindset to believe what God says in his word that it's possible to do what God says I can do. My dad put a model in his church years ago when he first became the pastor in Gary, Indiana. He put a model on his church wall. He said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthen me. Then he said, if, he said, if you believe you can, you can. You know, we have to believe with all of our hearts what God says about us that it's possible and God's word will manifest in you. His word will work for you. His word will, pro will prosper you. His word will deliver you. What is God really like? One day the disciple asked Jesus what God the Father was like. And Jesus was astonished. He said, I have been with you so long a time with you, yet you do not know me. John 14 verse 9. Jesus came to clarify that the Old Testament views of God the Father, every good and perfect gift is from above, and it cometh down from the Father of lights, in whom there is no variableness, neither shadow or turning. James chapter 1, verse 17. <clears throat> Jesus died for our sins so that we would not have to die. Jesus died for our sins so that we would not have to die. He took our infirmities so we would not have to be sick. So if Jesus took your infirmities, why do we get into agreement when the devil speaks a thought in our minds that I have a headache, I have a migraine, I'm sick, I'm tired, I'm hurting, I'm messed up, I'm confused. Those are thoughts of the enemy. And the more you allow those thoughts to dominate you, you would have the results of your confession. We must change our, our confession and line it with the word of God. Begin to speak God's word over ourselves. That's why I'm reading some of these healing scriptures because God's word, here's Psalm 30, Psalm 30, verse 2 and 3. says, Oh Lord my God, I called you for help and you healed me. Oh Lord, you brought me up from the grave and you did not spare me. He said, and you spared me from going down to the pit. God's word has so many enriching scriptures in there to remind us of the covenant we have with God. Healing is a covenant for every believer. 
God promises that I will heal you. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will be there for you anytime you call. But the problem comes in is when we don't know the word of God. That's why it's so important to get into the word of God and allow the word to get inside of you. Here's another one. Jeremiah verse 30 verse 17. The Lord said, I will restore health to you and heal your wounds, declares the Lord. The Lord promises to heal you, to restore you. But you got to get into agreement with God's word. Here's another one. Proverbs 15 verse 30. It's a cheerful look. Brings joy to the heart. And good news gives health to the bones. A cheerful look. When you look into the mirror of God's word. It should bring joy to your heart. And not only that. But it also produces health and nourishment to your bones. Proverbs 3 verse 7 8. It says. Do not be wise in your own eyes. But fear the Lord and shine evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Do not be wise in your own eyes. We try to do things our own way to fix our problems and we make a mess of things. And many times we gravitate to the evil imaginations or the evil thoughts because we're not ready to surrender to the voice of the Lord. If you don't surrender to God's voice and obey him, then you allow yourself to be opened up to the attacks of the enemy. So the enemy comes in. And he'll he, he flick you. He will hurt you. He will wound you. He will bruise you. In order to destroy you. James chapter 5 verse 15. Prayer, the prayer offered in faith. Will make a sick person well. And the Lord will raise him up. You got to believe God's word. God promises. That we must. Allow the word to resonate. In our hearts. Believe by faith that when I pray that God will hear me, not only will he hear me, but the Lord will raise me up when I'm afflicted. I do not allow sickness to dominate me not one time in my life anymore. Once I got the revelation of who God is, the power that's on the inside of me, that's working inside of my life, I refuse to give in to the voice of the enemy and allow myself to be afflicted. To where I cannot receive the healing God has for me. We must change our, our lives where we line up with God's word. Where everything about you will begin to be conducive to the promises God has spoken in his word. The many reasons, we talked about this last week. Many reasons why some people don't ever get healed. And the, the one of the main reasons is unconfessed sins. Unconfessed sins will hinder you. Prior, uh, uh, Psalm 66 verse 18 says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If I regard, if I cherish, if I hold on to unconfessed sins in my heart, then unconfessed sin will hinder me from receiving the covenant of the promise of healing. Unconfessed sin will leave your gates open. Just like when God had gave Nehemiah the vision to be rebuild the walls that has been broken down and repair the breaches. If we leave the breach open in our hearts, the breach is open where the enemy has access to come in and out of your life as he chooses. So the enemy comes in through the open breaches in your heart because of unconfessed sins and he'll flick you, he'll attack you, he'll wound you, he'll scar you, he'll hurt you, he'll mess you up because of unconfessed sin. One of the scriptures we read on last week in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 27 to 30 it talks about Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat that bread and drink that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep, die prematurely. Why? Unconfessed sin. 
unconfessed sins would cause you to partake of communion with an unclean heart. And God tells us that you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven with any type of sin in your heart. We must confess. We must come before God and allow him to wash us clean through the blood of the Lamb and to purify our thoughts and our actions on a daily basis. Every day we must come before God clean. He said, without holiness, no man can see the Lord. You must desire holiness. You must want to be holy in order to come in God's presence. Why? Because you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And as a temple of the Holy Ghost, God said he would not dwell in an unclean temple. If your temple is unclean, God promises I will not dwell in your temple. God promises I will destroy your temple. Because he said you destroy the temple, God is going to destroy you. So we must recognize the sin in our lives. We must recognize the habits and addictions that's not of God in our lives and confess those things before God and allow the blood of Jesus to wash us clean and to cleanse us from a dead conscience through the water of the word. God promises if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse from all unrighteousness. If we don't confess our sins and allow the Spirit of God to come into our hearts and wash us clean, we're going to continue to walk in darkness. Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. Verse 4 through 6. It says this, For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God <clears throat> excuse me, and the power of the world to come. If they fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to open shame. So what this is saying, that once you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you've tasted of the goodness of God, you got a chance to experience the presence of God and became a partaker of the Holy Ghost. Then he said, you've tasted the word of God and the power of the world to come through the revelation God being poured into you about his kingdom come that will be done. He said, if you fall away to renew them again to repentance, he says, if they fall away to renew them again to repentance, seeing they crucified the Son of God afresh. You keep crucifying Christ all, all over again. What you're saying that the death of, cross, of the cross wasn't good enough for you to keep you from sin. And one thing I found out about this passage of scripture, he said, is, 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 is said to renew them again, he said, it's, it's an open shame. Why? <clears throat> because the more I keep sinning and keep doing things I know is not of God, I'm telling God, you, your, your redemption wasn't good enough for me. Because if I really believed in you, I wouldn't keep doing the same thing I'm doing. But because we're habitual sinners, it takes 21 days to form a habit, good or bad. 21 days to break that habit. You can break anything that you know is not of God in your life when you submit to his authority and his lordship and allow the Holy Spirit to come into your consciousness, your mindset, to begin the redemption work in your mindset, to wash you clean in your conscience, that you have a clear slate to come before God knowing with confidence you have been redeemed. But if you continue to keep putting Christ to death through your rebellion, he said you put him open shame. You put him to open shame. You, you're telling God, I don't need Jesus. I can do this by myself. If you are able to purify and fix yourself up, you don't need Jesus. So many people says, Year after year, day after day, minute after minute, I'm going to get myself together. I'm going to make sure I get myself right so I can go to church. But the problem comes in, you confess you're going to get yourself right, 
but you can't do the work yourself. That That's deception that the enemy puts in your mindset to make you think you have the ability, you have the power to clean yourself up. Just like an alcoholic. An alcoholic is a person who's addicted to drinking alcohol. I remember hearing an alcoholic say, you know what, well, I'm, I'm going to stop drinking one day and then I'm going to church. I'm going to get myself together. I'm going to fix myself up. I'm going to let go of this alcohol. I'm coming to church. Never came to church, ended up dying as an alcoholic. Why? Because you can't do the work yourself. You got to allow the blood of Jesus to cleanse you. Only God has the power to cleanse you. Only God has the power to redeem you. Only God has the power to set you free. You must want to be free. One thing about God, he's not going to violate your will. He gives you the opportunity to come to him in confession and ask God to forgive you for your sins, come into your heart, be your Lord and Savior, and from that moment, you're born again. Another reason many people don't get healed is because of unbelief. Failing to believe in God's word. Unbelief is a major factor in the world today that will prevent you from receiving salvation, the deliverance from God's word to heal you. A breakdown of the body or the mind because they have been abused or, or, or unrealistic workloads or lack of proper rest and nutrition is another reason. We can get so overworked, so overbearing, we can worry so much until we get sick. And the more we overwork ourselves mentally, physically, emotionally, the worse things get in our lives. Then another issue we talked about was hereditary sicknesses or weaknesses or diseases. Things that came from generation to generation to generation. But I tell you tonight, I don't receive the hereditary sicknesses anymore. Why? Because I speak against those things by the power of the anointing of God's word. I command those hereditary curses of sickness and diseases to loose my mind, my body, my soul, and my spirit to leave me alone in Jesus' name. And return to the pit of hell where it come from. You don't have to receive hereditary sickness. Familiar spirits of infirmities. Just because my mama have heart conditions. Or my father have heart conditions. Or my brother or sister have, have uh, drug addictions. And all these different things. You don't have to fall in the same category. Or the same pattern. Because of those weaknesses. You can speak against those things through the power of the Holy Spirit and command them things to loose your family bloodline. And I guarantee when you plead the blood of Jesus against those things and command them to loose your family, those things are going to go. Another reason many people are afflicted is subconsciously desiring to be sick. You have people who, who are, well, I think it's the word anoretic, who, who are anoretic, so it's like a person that they eat, they eat so much, and then they vomit get back up, orexia, I forgot the name of the word, but you know, it's a disease, a sickness, that comes from a mindset, where they believe they're too fat, when they're skinny already, but yet, just a little bit of weight, they feel like they're, they're sick, so they, they eat and they throw up, they eat and they throw up, anorexic, that's the word I'm looking for, and, and they do this, because their subconscious mind makes them feel they're not, they're not good looking, they're not worthy, and that no one cares about them. So they feel like, if I can do this, I can make myself feel better and look better. But all the time, you're hurting yourself. You're killing yourself. So, And there's so many different reasons. People get this depressed. They get, they get uh, uh, it's another word, they, they get uh, uh, mentally tormented. Why? Because of the, the things I allow to come into my consciousness. People can speak you sick. Somebody can walk up to you and say, oh, you look sick today. Your face looks flushed. You, you look like you, you're, you're not doing well. And all of a sudden you think about what they just said and you get in agreement with it. You know what? You're right. I sure don't look well. I, I, I knew something was wrong with me this morning before I left the house. I know that I was starting to get a migraine headache. I felt this happening. I felt that happening to me. And guess what happens? 
Also, now because you dwell on the thought somebody else spoke into your life, now the results, the manifestation is coming forth in your life. Now your body's sick. You have the power to overcome it. Thank you, son. Got it. Interact it. You have the power to overcome anything the enemy throws at you when you put on the full armor of God. Ephesians chapter 6, beginning at verse 10 to the latter part of that chapter, you got to put on the full armor of God. If you don't put on your daily garments of warfare to fight the adversary and to stand against the wiles and attacks of the enemy, he's going to destroy you. He's going to break you down to nothing. Then another reason. People continue to walk in the flesh instead of walking in the spirit. That is the major thing that happens in the body of Christ today. We don't walk in the spirit all the time. We walk straddling the fence. We walk in a lukewarm state of being. We walk as, as one that's on God's side one minute, then you're on the devil's side the next minute. We're devil minded. We're wishy washy. We become contrary because we don't know what we want to live for. One minute I think I want to live for God, next minute I want to live for the world. The works of the flesh I manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, immolations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envy and murder, drunkenness, reviling, and such like. Of all which I tell you before, and I also told you in time past, they will do such things which shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 to 21. The church can pray for people with any of the above problems, but they will not be healed until the problem is resolved correctly. Even though that person may outwardly appear to have it all together, God is bound by his word, and many of his promises are conditional. When we obey and believe the word of God and act on it, as it says, we receive the answer to what we have going on in our lives, the problems. And God's word releases the promises. God is not willing that any should perish. But in spite of God's intense desire is that the world will be saved. Unless they hear about Jesus and accept him as their savior. Exactly what the word instructs them to do. They will not be saved. They will not be healed. They will not be delivered. Some ways God heals. God uses anointing oil. The anointing has such power by faith. When we trust in God's word, we take the anointing oil, which is the virgin olive oil, the virgin olive oil. We take that oil. We pray over that oil in faith. We believe that when I apply this oil to any area of my body, it's going to produce the results of what I'm looking for from God to heal. When you go to the altar call in the church, in most churches, it's demonstrated with anointing oil. When people come to the altar in our church, what we do, we pray over that person. We anoint them with oil and pray over that person. We believe that God is going to speak to that heart of the individual. Whatever area of their lives have been attacked by the enemy, they will be healed and delivered and set free. Strongholds will be stripped out of their hearts. The mindset will be transformed. The attitude will be changed and their bodies will be healed. I believe God's word through his anointing will, will set you free. James chapter 5 verse 14 and 15 says, Any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall, make, shall save the, the sick and the Lord shall raise them up. We got to believe that when I touch the forehead of an individual, that the anointing is going to begin to activate from that very moment. Just as sin was activated in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve disobeyed God's command and ate of the tree of good and evil, the same way the anointing is. The anointing is activated the moment my faith comes into agreement with God's word that when I'm touched with this oil, it's going to heal me. 
I anoint my hair with oil. And I believe God, when I anoint my hair with oil, it will cover me, it will protect me, it will shield me before I go out my door. So when I walk out the door, when the enemy comes to attack me, he's repelled by the covering of God's presence. The oil represents God's presence. We must come into agreement. He said, if two of you shall agree on earth touching anything, and as they ask in my name, it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. For if two or three gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Matthew chapter 18, verse 19 to 20. Matthew chapter 18, verse 19 to 20. Where two or three come together in agreement, according to God's word, and we receive the anointing, we demonstrate the power of the anointing. The anointing re re releases revelation. When you read God's word under the anointing, the anointing will begin to activate your vision to see something that's in God's logos and give you a spiritual insight beyond the natural realm into the supernatural to begin to give you a revelation, to speak a prophetic word, to bring deliverance to somebody's life. God's word has such power and authority when you stand on God's word and believe by faith that when I speak the word of God, God's word is going to bring a change in the hearers and the listeners of God's word. It's going to set them free in whatever area they have been bound in their life, whatever area they've been bound at, whatever area they have been imprisoned in by the enemy. God, just like God did with Paul and Silas when he was in the prison cells, God sent an angel. He called an earthquake to shake the jailhouse and the doors were open. All of them got set free. God's anointing that covers you will set you free from every attack the enemy brings against you. But you got to believe it by faith. Laying on the hands. Laying on the hands. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Mark chapter 16, verse 17 to 18. Many think that only super spiritual giants of faith are involved in this kind of ministry. But Jesus simply said that any believer who believes can have these as a result of their faith in God. In fact, all healthy believers should have these signs following them. We should have the signs following us, as it says in God's word. We must demonstrate the act of faith by believing that we are anointed, we walk in the anointing, we stand in the anointing, we live in the anointing, we abide in the anointing. Doesn't matter what comes my way. I will not be moved by circumstances, trials, or tests. Mark chapter 16. Let me read this. Mark 16 verse uh, of uh, 17, 18. And it says, matter of fact, go to 16. It says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth shall not be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they lay hands on the sick they shall recover. You know, this should be the normal way of life as a believer. Because of the anointing that rests upon your life, this is the results of the anointing. You can lay hands on the sick. They'll recover. If you drink any deadly poison by accident or did anyone speak poisoning things to you, God says it will not harm you. You're speaking new tongues. Was being is evidence of the Holy Spirit working in you, speaking you through a language that cannot be comprehended by the natural mindset. Why? Because he said you can cast out devils in the name of Jesus, and it will happen. This is the normal life and a way of life for a believer who who walks under the power of the anointing. When you walk in the anointing, you can have the results of faith to do what God says you can do, and you'll see it happen. The devil is a liar. The devil cannot stop you from doing what God promised for you to do according to his word. The gift of healing. Gift of healing. For the one is given by the spirit, the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge 
by the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit. But all these work is but one and the same self, same, the self same spirit divided to every man severally as he wills. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse eight and nine and verse 11. The gift of healing. There are many different gifts in the body of Christ and God promises that he will give us gifts as believers. Some, even in Romans chapter 12, talks about hospitality. Some, the gift of giving. I mean, so there's so many different areas in the body of Christ that people are ordained and anointed by God to do as a gift for the body of Christ. But all these gifts and talents that God's given us is for the same thing, building up the body of Christ from the same spirit. But you got to know what you are gifted in by the Spirit to operate in in the body of Christ. You can't sing if you're not a singer. If you weren't ordained to be a singer, you can't walk in the gift of singing. If you're not ordained to be a preacher, you can't walk in the gift of being a preacher. Why? Because you weren't ordained to do that. Many a cough, you're chosen. Whatever it is God called you to do, you're chosen to do it by God. And whatever God has given you to do, he will perfect that thing in your life. We're going to continue this on next week about the gift of healing. Because I mean, there's more to this that God has in his word for us. And I guarantee that when we get into this word, it's going to begin to show you more insight on how to overcome and combat the spirit of infirmity. The devil is a liar. And the devil comes with a purpose to blind you from God's truth. Because he knows once you get a revelation and get an insight into the mystery of the gospel, that you begin to tear down his kingdom. The enemy knows once you get a revelation from the heart of God, he knows that you become a threat to his kingdom. And we should always be a threat to the enemy's kingdom. As a believer, we need to stand on God's word, keep declaring God's word, Keep speaking God's word over ourselves and the lives of our family, our children. Stop speaking negative words over your children. Stop cussing your children out. Stop telling them they're no good. They're worthless. Because what you speak over them, death and life is in the power of the tongue. You would have the results of what you speak in their lives down the road. I remember uh, as a child being told, you know, you're going to be good for nothing. You ain't going to be no good. You ain't going to mount anything in life. Those words are hurting words to a child. And those words will manifest in that child's life as they get older. But thank God for grace. Because God says he will give us grace to help in the time of need. So he gave us boldness coming to his throne. So as I got older, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> as I got older, <clears throat> And begin to speak God's word over myself and other apostles and prophets and pastors. Begin to speak God's word over my life. My whole life was restructured in the path and the plan that God had for me before I was even born. The reason I am who I am today, because God spoke this into existence before I was even created in a mother's womb. And what God spoken is now manifesting in my adult years to keep teaching and preaching the gospel under the unction of the Holy Spirit, bringing God glory that lives will be changed, hearts will be mended, souls will be saved. Why? Because that's God's will for all people. So as we come to the close of another lesson, <clears throat> we're going to pick this up on next week about the spirit, the spirit, the spirit of healing, the, the gifts of healing, we're going to pick this up on next week. <clears throat> Excuse me. I know that God has more for us to, to hear and receive to help change and challenge us to think. A lot of these words God has given me is challenging us to think about what are we allowing in our mindsets? What, what is causing us to be driven in the pathway that we're walking in? Are we walking in truth? Are we walking in rebellion? And God's word will manifest in such a way it will bring insight 
into your life to give you the revelation and the understanding of what and who God called you to be in this time and season. So Lord God, we thank you for another opportunity to share your word. I pray, Lord God, that your word will penetrate the darkness in all of our hearts after hearing this word, that we will be changed, we'll be transformed, we will be delivered, we will be set free by the power of the Holy Spirit. Forgive us for our sins, knowingly and unknowingly. Make us righteous. Purify our thoughts and our actions that align it with your word, that we walk by faith and not by sight. And I thank you, Lord God, that your anointing will destroy the yokes and remove the bondages from our hearts and cause us to live a fruitful and abundant and a free life to serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. As we always do each week, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to repeat after me, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I ask you to come into my heart. For, forgive me of my sins, knowingly and unknowingly, and cleanse me by the blood of the Lamb. Come into my heart, make me clean and righteous, and be my Lord and Savior. And Lord, I ask you to fill me with the Holy Spirit, and that with the power to become a witness for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God. I want to thank all of you for joining me tonight. <clears throat> I guarantee that the more we hear this word, about the spirit of infirmity, the more your mind is going to be in the, it's like the, the computer in your mind is being reprogrammed. And God is downloading in our databanks the Holy Spirit software to cleanse us from the mindset of infirmity, to live in mind, to have the mindset of deliverance and healing to flow through our lives to reach others we come in contact with. So as you get in God's word, study the word of God, allow the word of God to drive you in the direction God has for you to go. Don't be wise in your eyes. Don't walk in your own ways, but walk in truth. And I guarantee the truth will set you free. God bless you. Again, thank you for tuning in tonight and continue to let the spirit of God to minister to your heart. And I guarantee that your life is going to change by the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless you.